In my last video, I was about 5 episodes into a place further than the universe. And by now I finish the anime and it was the second 10 out of 10 I've ever given to an anime. It is also the first one core anime I've given a 10 to. I don't know if it would have been a 10 if I had watched it back when it aired or even a few months ago, but right now it's a 10 for me and it will probably stay a 10. I regret saying it won't be a 10 in my last video, but it has turned out into a funny situation. The show touched on some stuff that just hit the fr I mean smacked peculiarly and it was all beautifully presented. I came for the moe, I stayed for emotional enlightenment. I know it's a 10 because I can't point out any noticeable flaws after finishing uh, the series. Uh, maybe a few weird moments I didn't quite vibe with, but every show has that, you know. And this one barely had those moments. Another great indicator for 10s for me, uh, a rule of thumb if you will, is clapping. I have clapped for all 10 out of 10 shows so far, and I have clapped at least a few times during this particular show, twice in the last episode. I won't delve into this any longer, because my experience with this show is very personal, and if you have any interest at all, you should check it out for yourselves, rather than watching an anonymous weeb on the internet dissecting a cartoon. Thanks Madhouse for providing my first anime original 10 out of 10. That was a quick little update on a place further than the universe I touched upon in my last video. And now I want to get into the main part of this video, which is Haruhi Suzumiya. I will probably mention some spoilers, depending on what you consider a groundbreaking spoiler, so you are free to GTFO if you are on a mission to avoid any and all Haruhi spoilers. But I also want to watch time, so if you're interested in my thoughts and how I tackled the series as a newbie, continue watching. Let's just jump into it. Before actually starting the anime, I had little to no idea what the show was all about. All I've seen was that one dance, a bunny girl playing guitar on stage, and I picked up from some videos discussing it, uh, that the main character is a deity or something. I've also seen Red Bart's Endless 8 video, link in the description, before starting it. And uh, I really, that, that video really pushed me to put the anime high on the never ending abyss that is my plan to watch list. It just looked like a high school shenanigans kind of show. Well, now, it did uh, the turn out to be I even wanted that, to watch but I also feel it turned out to be boys from quite a bit more. Said that I should watch it just to experience the disappearance movie. Then I also found out it's a Christmas movie, and seeing that the season is fitting, I thought, why not? Let's watch one episode to see if I like it before catching up to some stuff I need for winter 2021. You know, the season of sequels. I mean, I had just finished a place further than the universe and I was ready to experiment. Little did I know, my winter 2021 catching up plans were to be completely overridden. Before I knew it, I had completed the anime. And I watched it chronologically. Yes, after pondering for some time, I have decided to take the easy way out. Season 1 is aired out of order, with the last 4 or so episodes happening after the events of the next season even. I note the second season is aired in chronological order. From this helpful guide, you can see the melancholy arc is the dominant one in season 1, and after watching it chronologically, I can say I'd like to go back and watch season 1 in the original broadcast order, because the 6th episode of the melancholy arc, the 6th episode uh, is a great way to end the season while I, watching it chronologically, got the climax in episode 6, making it less impactful. It would also be nice to see Kion and Itsuki reference episode 6 of the melancholy arc during the baseball game in boredom before actually seeing the episode. 
starting the show off with episode 00 would be brilliant, much better than seeing it after the Psy arc which details how the movie in episode 00 was made, and if I had seen the production of Mikuru Asahina's adventure 25 episodes after it was first showcased, I would come. Because I watched it chronologically, I completed season 2 before season 1, which is unusual, so if you're brave, go with the broadcast order for that slick mosaic storytelling. It is also visible that the melancholy arc is broken up with lesser important smaller arcs, such as the island mystery arc which is, in my opinion, probably the worst arc. In the end I gave it an 8, because I quite enjoyed how the melancholy arc wrapped the entire season as a whole, and it does so in both watch orders because of its dominance, and because I really liked it both as an introduction to the franchise, which caught me off guard with its quite unexpected expected concepts which raised my interests, and as an enjoyable well done piece of entertainment. As most reviewers did, I also find uh, uh, repetitiveness with characters like Asahina and Yuki especially, and their seemingly dull purpose and personality, but it contributed to the show's charm in the end, and when I find such character flaws early on, I wait for future developments to fully take points off my score, so an 8 it is. Plus, I really enjoy Kion's monologues and remarks, which is a big reason why I couldn't lower it to a 7. He is one of the only p fictional characters I would actually want to have an enjoyable conversation with, and he's a great protagonist because he feels like any other underpowered protagonist ever, but if the underpowered protagonist was actually believable. He has some banger lines and it sounds like something I would say in certain situations. Is this me relating to a made-up person? Moving on to season 2, uh, I was really popping off after Bamboo Leaf Rhapsody. I thought it was great and it uh, introduced essential storylines. Then, with a smirk, I consumed the first two episodes of Endless 8. Then I skipped through two more on two times speed, and I was surprised by the change of lighting in the, the scene where the group discusses the time loop. In general, I was surprised by the fact the script is changed in some parts, for example, instead of saying something's wrong, they'd slip in a sneaky, wrong, wrong, it's all wrong, and the episodes I've seen uh, did try to tell the same story with a different perspective, so I couldn't really take off any points. I skipped it because I was bring binging the series, and I was eager to see if the Psy arc is really mediocre or not, and I didn't want to waste time. If I watched it while it was airing, I definitely sit through all eight episodes and reach enlightenment. But it's the end of 2020, give me a break. 2020, get it. The no-no year. Endless 8 is, from my perspective, a great idea that advertised the franchise to the new generation of anime watchers like myself, really drove the point home of how painful the loop was for Yuki, and it took up the majority of the season, which is somehow a plus. I give that a plus now, I would probably consider it terrible in 2009, but by doing so the show established its quirkiness and gave room for the disappearance movie, which, and I'll get to it later, is better off being a movie than the central arc of season 2. The Psy arc was quite good in my opinion, since it explored new grounds with the characters and the potential complications the S8 Brigade would cause while making the movie. And while I was watching it, I did find the shift in atmosphere extremely noticeable. Uh, I reckon every arc has its own distinct vibe it gives off, but this one was quite strong and there were some awkward moments like the one in Surya's house, but it's a good preparation for the change in pace in the upcoming movie, uh, the pinnacle of the animated franchise so far. I bestow the 2009 season with an 8 out of 10. Uh, speaking of the movie, uh, you cannot skip the anime and watch the movie because you won't be as satisfied as if you would be if you took the time to experience the show first before delving into the movie, and that's what makes the movie even better. Uh, the first hour of the movie is basically rendered pointless if you have no context of what's going on. The structure of the Haruhi animated canon is an intriguing one 
intri an intriguing one to me. Uh, it isn't too long and it feels like climbing a mountain. You step through arcs and filler arcs. You face your endless eights along the way. And at the very top, where it's so cold you can barely move, where the air is so sparse you can barely breathe, and where the oxygen is so non-existent you can barely exist, you see the upper echelon of the storyline you trekked up until now. A rocky mountain top covered with occasional snowfall, only some are able to fully experience and take it all in, and you are one of those people. As you observe the mountain top, you are facing an incredible soundtrack, an incredibly artistic slow start that is an overture to the best development the mountain has to offer, and you finally realize that your hike was worth the time. Unlike my metaphor, this movie delivered and it didn't fall through, even with the high expectations fans had for the disappearance arc. It strengthened my love for characters such as Kion and Yuki, and it currently stands as the best anime movie I've seen. The thing I liked most about it was the fact it literally brought up every single important plot point from the show and used it in some useful way. I love uh, the atmosphere of the new school Haruhi and Itsuki attend and the cafe they visit with Kion, which is fueled by the grey sky looming over them, production-wise and execution-wise. I have no major issues to bring up, and for that reason, I think it deserves a 10. There were simply too many good moments that resonated with me to give it a score that's any lower. You can call it recency bias, but after Kion said he didn't have to save the world right now and proceeded to live out his bizarrely normal life, it smacked way too peculiarly than it should have. This is a great example of how to wrap up a storyline while honoring everything the prequels have established, and I approve of it. And yes, I did clap, discreetly, during the credit sequence. Watching something that came out when you were young is an elevating experience, not only because it puts your existence into perspective, but also because it makes you feel nostalgic for a time you didn't even experience. I guess it is the same reason I enjoy putting everything in historical context, to learn about a time that has gone by and that will never repeat itself again, to take anything and everything I can from that time period to better this one. For that, Hyota Animation, thanks. I don't want you to think I'm shilling out tens left and right because I don't think I am. But I am still pretty uh, early in my anime watching life, so I may change my approach to scoring several times in the near, near future. Perhaps the reason why my average score is above 5 is because I handpick which shows I watch in regard to what I hear about them online, so I don't watch mediocre shows too often. Either way, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, my longest video so far and if you have anything to say comment here or go to my twitter link in the description subscribe if you want to uh, so i don't have to pretend i'm shouting into the void anymore but i still find talking about this stuff satisfying void or not maybe i should talk about some series i didn't like next go do your homework now god bless